When I was a freshman, like the first thing I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take choir. And I took it and it was just as, it was even better than I thought it was going to be, honestly. It's been so fun. I like doing choir because I like Mr. Stickle a lot and I like singing. And it's been something I've wanted to do ever since I was really little. Well, I did choir, first of all, because I like to sing. Um, and I took it freshman year um, and I really liked it, so I decided to keep going. So basically the structure of our classes is that we come on to Zoom and we have ourselves muted like the entire time. And we sing, Mr. Sickle sings warm ups and we sing with him. Just all you can kind of hear is him over the Zoom and yourself in your room. So it's definitely a different experience. Whenever you're singing in your room over Zoom, it's like you're alone and Mr. Sickle's on the camera, but you can see other people, but you can't hear anybody else. And so you only hear your part, and it's really weird. In person, obviously, we have to be social distanced. We've moved from the choir room into the PAC. So we're all sitting in the auditorium seats, and there's tape on the ones that you can sit in, and we're all six feet apart. And we actually wear specific masks, so they have um, disposable masks that tie in the back that we put on to sing. It's a different sound in the auditorium, just the space, the way it fills the space is a little different. It's a lot different than being right next to your neighbor. Um, so everybody really has to like work that much harder to make sure that they know their part and they can hold it on their own. It's just like the huge space and everybody's completely spread out and it, it feels a little dystopian, honestly. It is different that we don't really have an objective, clearly, because there's just, we're not going to have a concert, you know, it's not in the near future, I don't know when that'll be, but definitely a high risk activity. So I think we're just working on music, doing pieces to put together, and it's really enjoyable. I mean, everybody in Corral wants to be singing. I think right now we're singing just to sing. Um, we're not, we don't like, have any concerts or any performances, but we're more so singing for ourselves. I think definitely the sound and the group is still there, you know, it's still an enjoyable community to be in, but I definitely think that there are some people that I'm like, hey, wait, where are they? And they're doing virtual choir. It's like a close experience, like everyone's friends and everyone gets to like just sing together, but it's just been different this year because we're kind of isolated. It's definitely really sad. Like, I mean, the basically like being in a group of people and singing and when you can't do that, it's like, well, why am I doing this? But whenever we're in person and we're singing together, I think it's all worth it. Even though it's very strange and very unusual, it's still a bright spot in the day. It is hard, but, but um, we'll make it through. With the rise of the coronavirus, our school has transitioned back to all online. But what happens to our beloved St. Pete? We interviewed Mr. Turnentine to hear about how the school store is functioning with our new circumstances and how they have adapted. So it's like a job, they have to work certain shifts. And without having that, I've put some content that we do online, but it's really just, um, it's been a difficult transition. So the online store is new this year? We've always had it, but we upgraded it. And our focus is students. 
So we didn't really need to have an online presence for students because students were in the building every day and they walked by the store and they had lunch and they had all those things. So we just really didn't need to have that. Since like we're online now, what do the students do during the hour now that they can't like work in the store physically? So we have some online business um, simulations. So it's called virtual business, how you um, write a job description and how you interview and how you find employees and how you manage them. And that's kind of what we do, even though we're not doing it right now. YouTube is a social media platform with a wide range of capabilities centered around one thing, video. And with this video, people make all types of videos. People make entertainment videos, or movies, or documentaries, or how-to videos, or gaming videos, or videos that are just meant to make you laugh. But today we're gonna be focusing on the other side of YouTube, not the viewer, but the creator. And specifically creators at our school, Blue Valley North. Today I got the pleasure to interview Jake Sayers, a sophomore here at Blue Valley North who makes Nintendo Switch themed content under the Elias Monkey in a barrel. So in terms of like creative stuff, I started doing drawings and uh, a little like animation like attempts in like I think like the third grade and I was really passionate about that and then by the time of like eighth grade I started making a lot of I thought they were higher quality videos at least. Uh, so then I felt confident enough to kind of put myself out there on uh, YouTube. At the beginning, I was like greedy for like fame almost. <laughs> I was like, you know, it would be cool if I hit like a giant, like huge number. But now I feel like maybe I should take like a step back and just make the videos more like high quality and try to improve them as much as I can. Um, in the future, I kind of see it as something just to put whatever I feel like on there. I'll like put it through YouTube first, see like, does it have good reception? And then maybe I'll like apply it to a future project or something like that. So I see YouTube as kind of passion project, hobby kind of deal. Yeah. I see myself applying this to probably like something related to commercials possibly, like something with marketing, maybe directing, like that would be cool. Uh, but you know, that's farther uh, along the line of doing more projects and seeing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how far I could go with that. Um, well, I think YouTube is just a great place to express yourself. I know a lot of people feel that their opinions probably don't matter and that you know they feel pretty minuscule compared to the, uh, the whole world. YouTube is a good space to like share what you know is unique about you and you know show others uh, what you're what you believe in and it helps you uh, learn skills and opportunities that help you future jobs and uh, life in general. And my final question to you is, what's the inspiration behind the monkey in a barrel name? It's actually pretty interesting. Probably when I was around five, I got addicted to this one movie. It was called Curious George. And if you've seen Curious George, it's about a curious monkey named George. He likes bananas. Who doesn't love bananas? That became like my favorite, I guess like animal. Uh, when I got like, I think it was my computer I had to come up with a username. So I was like, what's my favorite animal? And I said, monkey. So I just put monkey in there. And eventually when it came to making a channel, uh, I was thinking, uh, I want this to be funny. I want this to be fun. But I also wanted the name to kind of be catchy and cool. So I was like, monkey, what's, what, what's funny about monkey? And like, what words can I play off of that? Eventually I was like, barrel of monkeys. Right, right, barrel of monkeys. And then I thought, you know, monkey in a barrel, it sounds so silly just to say, hey, it's me, monkey in a barrel. It's kind of fun and silly. And it kind of just incorporates that idea of just having fun. Just like Jake said, content's just for fun. And he encourages you to make your own channel as well. And if you want to get in touch with Jake, just head on over to his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash monkey in a barrel. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I would much rather have every single person in the building with me doing what I know how to do. I feel like a much more competent and capable teacher when I'm not doing distance learning. First, the impersonal side is talking to a screen rather than having a student in your classroom. So it's, I'm finding it really difficult to balance doing two jobs at once. 
operating systems. I in in hybrid, I'm trying to operate three screens at once, and it's just a different dynamic. I've learned how to better plan, organize, communicate, and um, and I think that's shown with the communication back from students too. It's put students more in a role where they have to communicate because they're gone. So my email communication with my students has improved dramatically. Some things are more important than others and taking care of ourselves and our own well-being is more important than getting an assignment in on time. This change of environment and mode modem of how we communicate and how we interact with students isn't um, sh just for short term. I hope that we look at the, the model on how we educate 